Coming to you from our Eros Park studios in the capital, this is Primetime News, the Monday edition. Trusting your day panned out as planned. Many thanks for joining me as we bring context to developments shaping the local, continental and global narratives. I'm Michael Madimba. In tonight's lead, President Nangolo Mbumba arrived in Germany on Sunday to participate in the Hamburg Sustainability Conference taking place between Monday and Tuesday. During his visit, the head of state is also expected to hold talks with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Additionally, President Mumba has also been invited to Berlin for bilateral talks with the German President Frank Walter Steinmeier. A statement noted the Hamburg Sustainability Conference is a joint initiative of the German government, the United Nations Development Programme, the Michael Otto Foundation, and the city of Hamburg. It is being held under three themes reshaping the international financial architecture, unleashing investment for the SDGs, and leveraging transformation. The communique further added the conference seeks to build on the summit of the future, which President Bumba and Chancellor Scholz co-chaired last month, aiming to create a platform for discussions on sustainable development and reforms to the global financial architecture. We're currently tracking the story and will bring you developments as they unfold. Now, on to the Ronga region where residents of the Otwe and formal settlement whose makeshift structure survived the recent devastating fire that claimed a life have expressed concern over the living conditions. Our coastal-based reporter Isabel Bento was at the scene and filed this report. Herman Philippus, whose home is just a few meters from the burnt-down shacks, lives in a temporary shelter made of plastics and sacks. The municipality has prohibited residents from building more durable structures as they are occupying the area illegally. Meanwhile, the Valfus Bay municipality has taken a firm stance against the illegal land occupation at the Otwea informal area, stating that this contributes to the recurring shack fires. This comes after a fire on Friday, which destroyed approximately 80 informal structures said to be constructed on land which belongs to the National Housing Enterprise. The council revealed that some shacks are owned by people who already have homes in Valfus Bay or elsewhere and are renting out these informal structures at exorbitant rates. An, an individual, for example, that occupies land because that person has no other alternative. But when other people see this happening, they jump at the opportunity. Now you have people staying in houses in, uh, in, 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 in Kuiset Munt or wherever they are staying, but they see this opportunity as a money-making uh, uh, opportunity. They put up shacks, they go back home, they lease out the shacks. The Wolfish Bay is uh, the oasis of opportunity. And people come from all over the country and set up house here. And this becomes a problem. But as a council, what message are we sending? If we, for example, say that you grab land, you occupied land illegally, and your shacks burned down, so now you will be provided with an area where you can stay, houses might be built. What about those people that follow procedures? So we need to be very strict in how we approach these things. And we do not, and um, in this case, I have sent, a, uh, I want to send a clear message through that we should not politicize these things. We should not campaign and politicize uh, uh, issues dealing with people's livelihoods here. One person passed away. This is a time where all of, of, of the stakeholders, government entities must come together and try to solve this problem. Additionally, it was established that at least 70 of those affected by the fires are non-Namibians. The municipality plans to engage with the Ministry of Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security to determine the way forward. Moving on. The Namibian Police Force, or NAMPO, is conducting the Border and Infrastructure Protection Annual Command Conference at Rundu in the Gavango East region. The conference is aimed at deliberating issues affecting the operations of the Directorate. Speaking on behalf of NAMPO, Inspector General Joseph Shikongo earlier today, Regional Commander for Kavango East Commissioner Andreas Haingura noted the conference will also devise strategies to combat crime, particularly cross-border crimes and protection of government infrastructure. Our Kavango region-based correspondent Sawi Siku compiled this report. The aim of this year's command conference is to bring together divisional commanders to evaluate the level of implementation of resolutions taken during 2021 
Command Conference, discussing administrative and operational issues within the Directorate, and identify challenges, setbacks, and devise new strategies to overcome these challenges. Dear senior officers, the Namibian Police Force is currently facing some challenges ranging from shortage of manpower, uniform pieces, transport, accommodation, both living and office, whereby both the infrastructure protection directorate is not excluded. Now, as Namibia readies for the 2024 national and presidential elections, the various political actors are in full swing on the campaign trail as they sell the respective action plans or manifestos to the length and breadth of the Namibian electorate. Let's now take a look at the weekend's political activities. Swapo Party Vice President Netumbo Nandindaitwe, who unveiled the manifesto in Braille at a star rally at the Oshakati Independence Stadium in the Osana region, stated that this was done to ensure inclusivity for all, leaving no one behind. Comrade Moses, is, um, we have become now good partners and in the first time of the association because we have to ask them to transmit for us. Yes, they have the capacity and the skill. And we are ready to surprise because they give us a good surprise. Within three days, it was transmitted. And that is why we are able to launch it today when we are having our fourth campaign in the but we will be able to have the office at every rally in case there will be a comrade who will be attending the next rally and we will be giving them office. Meanwhile, the leader of the official opposition party, McHenry Venani, strongly opposed the alleged attempt by the Electoral Commission of Namibia to handpick an entity to print the ballot papers that will be used in the upcoming presidential and national assembly elections. Now ECN together with the masters wants to handpick a company that is going to print the electoral materials. We are saying no. We are saying no because we know it has been a contentious issue in this country. Those of us are no longer in politics knows how ballot papers were printed and stuffed in the boxes because the easiest election to rig is the ballot paper election. And now that the ECN is not coming to the party, they are calling, what do you call this meeting? Public PLC. PLC's meetings, but they discuss everything else but the ballot. The last PLC now, they want permission from political parties for them to handpick a company to do ballot papers. PDM is saying an unequivocal no. Stay tuned for your top roundup with the business segment afterwards. Welcome to the Primetime Beast segment, the slot encapsulate in business and economics. The Namibia Investment Promotion and Development Board, or NIPDB, has officially launched its information sharing platform. Now, the platform will serve as a centralized source of information on bursaries 
scholarships and other funding opportunities available for Namibian youth. NIPDB Acting Chief Operations Officer Johan Steenkamp now explains how the platform works. Recent statistics revealed a substantial increase in applications for funding, with over 30,000 applications received in 2023 alone. We also know that over the period of 2021 to 2023, over 25,000 potential applicants for study funding have been turned down. However, despite this, we also recognize that many eligible candidates remain uninformed about the opportunities due to various barriers, maybe geographical, informational, or technological. The NIPDB is committed to bridging this gap. Our platform will serve as a centralized hub where young people can easily access current and credible information about educational funding opportunities, initially local opportunities, but in future also international opportunities. By collating data from government ministries, public and private sector programs, we aim to create a comprehensive resource that will empower our youth to make informed decisions. Minister of Urban and Rural Development Erastus Utoni earlier today expressed satisfaction with the construction work underway at the Mass Housing Development Project at Ocho Wise Extension 10 in Vinduk which was incomplete due to legal disputes with the contractor since 2017. Dating back 2017, just imagine. And it's ourselves taking one another to court. Yet our people are suffering. And it's just not a good thing. So which resulted in a stoppage and consequent delays in its completion, Not, notwithstanding the above, I've been informed and I have personally come and also invited a few of our key stakeholders to see and appreciate that work has indeed resumed. It has just uh, showed you and Kapadi have just uh, shown to us what is taking place now. Ladies and gentlemen, out of the total of 21 sites across the country where the mass housing development projects or housing projects were implemented, only three sites have commenced but uncompleted houses. This, are this site, Ochomuithe, this one here, uh, is the one that has got um, houses which are, have started but uncompleted. And this is what we refer to it as extension 10. Now, with 362 uncompleted houses, or poor with 24 uncompleted housing units, and Swakop Mund, which now only has 186 uncompleted houses, there were 505 uncompleted houses in Swakop Mund, but we completed 319 between October 2022 and June this year, leaving only 186 houses to be completed. Stand by for your Econ Roundup with Sport Planet on the other side. Welcome to Sport Planet, the segment dedicated to all things sport in action. The English Premier League kickstarts the segment. 
John Duran has signed a new long-term contract with Aston Villa following his stunning start to the season. The Premier League club announced earlier today. Now, the 20-year-old who reportedly agreed personal teams with West Ham during the summer transfer window has agreed a deal that will keep him at Villa Park until 2030. Duran has scored six times a season, including the only goal in last week's 1-0 win against Bayern Munich in the Champions League, despite starting just once in all competitions. The Columbia International joined Villa in January 2023 from MLS side Chicago Fire scoring five goals in 23 Premier League appearances last season, mostly as a substitute. A staying atop football. A French Football Federation statement earlier today revealed France coach Didier Deschamps has replaced injured central defender Dayo Upemakano with Lyok Bade for the upcoming Nations League matches with Belgium and Israel. Now, the 25-year-old suffered a muscle strain in Bayern Munich's 3-0 draw with Eintracht Frankfurt on Sunday. Loic Bade has never played for France at full international level, but the severe defender was in the Paris Olympics team that won the silver medal. Stand by for your sports roundup. This is where we conclude tonight's bulletin. Much appreciated for making a date with me. Make sure you catch prime time news tomorrow, same place and time. A parting reminder to follow the on-screen prompts to stay abreast with happenings on the local, continental and international fronts. From myself, Michael Mendimba, and the creative force behind prime time news. It's bye for now. Good night. <laughs>